Uh, good evening. This is Charlotte Pierce. I'm the producer of Face the Book TV, and welcome to our viewers, our live viewers, and our audio listeners. We go live uh, stream to Facebook, YouTube, LinkedIn, and then we pull the audio for distribution on Apple, Spotify, and all your your uh, famous major podcast apps. So we appreciate you uh, your subscription. It helps you get the notices. We do about two uh, episodes per month. So you don't get a lot of annoying email, but you'll get some reminders. Um, my company is Pierce Press, and I publish travel, children's, and alternative education books. We've recently won a couple of awards for our children's books. And I'd like to introduce, um, let's see, uh, we have, yeah. We have in the in the on the episode today we have uh, talking about book marketing. So book marketing timeline and specifically um, because this is something it came to me because I wrestle with it all the time. You know, at lots of our members at independent publishers of New England wrestle with this. They they're so consumed in producing their book that they get to the end and they haven't thought about how they're going to get it out to the world. So Samantha Colber, who's a marketing director at Rootstock Publishing, is with us. And she's also the author of this wonderful book of poetry, which I have on my shelf over here, uh, Birth of a Daughter. It's gotten a lot of great reviews. Our host tonight is Eddie Vincent of Encircle Publications. He's the uh, the gr grandmaster of Encircle Publications and the president of IPNE. So he's kind of running our New England, independent publishers of New England um, until we, no, we, we'll keep him around. I think <laughs> we have a great new board of directors. It's ipne.org and you can, uh, Join and get many benefits for uh, if you're an independent publisher. Lots of education, networking, book shows, and cooperative marketing opportunities. If you use our hashtag, which you have to watch to the end or listen to the end, we'll tell you what the hashtag is. And you can get uh, books and publishing services, gadgets and gear and good things. So just use it. It helps us get the word out about the... Um, the podcast and the live stream. And you could also win a spot like Sarah did on our um, our author spotlight that we're going to be including every. So Sarah's, or uh, Eddie's gonna take it over from here. And I think Sarah's slide is a little bit later on. So let me know when you want me to run that, Eddie, okay? Can you unmute yourself, Eddie? Oh. There you go. Okay, let's try let's try this again. All right. <laughs> Hi. Hi, welcome to the show. Today we have Samantha and Sarah on to talk about marketing. Um, welcome you both. Can we start off by getting to know you a little bit? Samantha, can you tell the audience a little bit about yourself? Sure. Thanks for having me. Eddie. Hi, Sarah. Hi, Charlotte. She's uh, now behind the scenes. Um, my name is Samantha Colbert. As Charlotte mentioned, I'm an author of a book of poetry, but I'm also the marketing director for Rootstock Publishing. We are a small local hybrid publisher in Montpelier, Vermont. Um, we publish about a book a month, and I'm in charge of helping all of our authors um, partner with them to make a marketing plan for, for their book. I get their books up on the website. I create social media assets. I create press releases sell sheets. Um, I help them with booking events, all sorts of things that, that we'll talk about today on, on how best to market your book. Thank you. Sarah, could you introduce yourself a little bit? Hey, thanks for having me, Eddie and Charlotte. Um, Samantha and I know each other from our graduate program. Um, we went to Goddard College um, uh, and got our MFAs over there. Uh, I think we graduated in 2014. And so um, we've kept in touch ever since. I published a book, so I kind of consider myself a, um, a late bloomer uh, to the creative writing or publishing world. Um, I've done a million other things. and uh, But in 2018, 
I published a book with Red Hen Press. They're out of Los Angeles. Um, and um, so I learned a lot on the fly about marketing my own book on a serious budget, <laughs> small budget. <laughs> Well, thank you for that. Um, for those I'm, who don't I'm know, I'm calling in from Seattle, FYI. So, <laughs> West Coast, East Coast. That's great because we need both opinions here, and because <laughs> they can be different. <laughs> um, so, for those who don't know who I am, uh, I'm Eddie Vincent. I am the publisher of Encircle Publications, and uh, I am the president of IPNE. So, let's get started here. Um, I'm going to start with <clears throat> Samantha. Samantha, uh, when you're, what is the first thing you do when starting to promote someone? So um, where, do I, they, where do you begin? Yeah. Well, you begin before the book is published. So that's important to know. And on this slide, that's actually a picture of me with my book in the ARC stage, which is known as the advanced reader copy. And so that's what you get from your publisher, um, which is like the proof of the book. So there's actually a, a gray band on the cover of that book there that's not on the final copy. So that's what lets you know that it's the, the proof copy. So I, I did that picture and put it on social media. I put that on all of my platforms, which for me includes um, Instagram, Twitter and Facebook and so that was my announcement that the book was almost ready kind of showing off the cover showing off that it's here and I'm, I was um, getting ready to take pre-orders so that's what I help authors do although even before that you'll be wanting to um, announce your book you can do a cover reveal once your designer has the cover ready you can put that up on your social media platforms uh, your website as an author you definitely want to have a website um, and we suggest doing that ASAP even before your book is, even before you're submitting your book to publishers. Um, it's great to have a website, especially to secure your domain name because many of the names might be taken. And so you'll want to make sure that you get a, a good domain name. We suggest at Rootstock Publishing, we suggest that you use just your name, your author name. Um, some people might want a website for their book title. However, if you're going to publish more books in the future, you're going to want to be known as an author under your name so that, you know, more than one book will be out there and you can put all the books on your website rather than just having one website for your book. Um, so doing that website first, getting out the word on social media second um, are the very beginning stages that I, I talk with authors about. So, so Sarah, being a published author through a publishing company, how does that differ from what what she just laid out. Did they oh, ask you to do certain things? Um, yeah, that, uh, Sam is an absolute pro and always has been um, I, before she took on this title. In fact, I consulted her frequently in leading up to the publication of my book. Um, so yes, all those bullet points I definitely hit. Um, it's pretty easy to do your own website. I mean, I liked um, the look and feel of Squarespace. It seemed kind of modern and uh, to, to be honest, it was just kind of fun to play around with. I mean, this is your book. This is my this is my debut, so it was absolutely worth it to you know um, tool around in the in the CMS and figure out how I wanted it to look. Um, and I knew that people would be googling my name, you know, once this book was out. Um, my name was already taken, but I, I did Canon Sarah. So um, if you Google my name. And the title of the book, it like 8,000 things come up. So, you know, I tapped into a couple of friends that were, um, you know, marketing types. And um, the website kind of was the first step. I already I had some links I could share from previous writing in there. And then Red Hen had a really great, um, well, about a 15 page author, what do they call it? Um, questionnaire. And I, I remember at the time I was working um, for a high school and I spent all of my spring break on this thing because it was like 18 months in advance of, um, of the intended publication date. And they needed ever, like so many things. I mean, it took, and somebody told me like, spend some time on that, you know, like take some not time off work. Like you're going to need a week on this thing. Um, they did create, you know, the press release and they added the things, but this was like, they were asking me, what do you intend to do? You know, how are you going to sell, help sell this book where we are, we are a functioning press, but we need to be partners with you. So it, 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 it like 
really kicked off this brainstorming session that would last for the next year and a half, really. Um, I wasn't worried about calling bookstores 18 months in advance, but it was more like the website. What do I want the web? What do I want the copy on the back to look like? People, I think there's a misconception that, you know, you just hand it off to a brilliant editor and they take care of all this, but that's just really not the way it works. I, I'm not sure if it ever did, but you know, for me, it was um, everything I wrote was the thing that appeared, you know, on the press release, on the little blurb on Amazon, on their blurb on their website, um, you know, the two liner description, you know, your all your little elevator pitches and, and whatnot. So um, those kind of, I mean, it's again, it's your baby. So it takes a while to, to, um, to get it just the way you want it. Um, sending review copies, they did that. Um, to, and they asked me who, who I would like it to go to. So, you know, spreadsheets become your friend too. <laughs> spreadsheets <laughs> do become your friend. There's no doubt about that. I have them for all my authors. Yeah. And, and <laughs> I would say creating your own list of supporters, you know, and, um, I started, you know, Sam, you probably remember, like just kind of slowly, I'm, I'm kind of shy about, flooding people's inboxes. So I just do a quarterly update. And um, it was just so cool to see how excited your friends and family and writer pals um, and just your community in general about like, oh my gosh, you're publishing a book. Like, that's so cool. You know, like we all, love, most people have at least one book they love, even if they're not in this world that we, you yeah. know, live in. Yeah. Um, so I, I, I mean, I, I think I had like a hundred people and I, was pretty conscientious about asking them for permission. You know, do you want to be on my list and in this and that. So that was a, a, a friend of mine um, called it, you know, gathering your tribe. So that, um, that is very important when you get the beta readers and you get people out there talk, talking about your book. Mm -hmm. um, I, so Samantha, I do have another question for you. When you're marketing for Rootstock, do you market towards bookstores or the general public? So, and if you do both, how, what's the difference? Yeah, we do actually do both. Um, and there is a difference. So we have a number of lists at Rootstock Publishing that we will email to. And we have a bookstore list of all the independent bookstores in the country. So we'll send announcements. We'll send book announcements for each release. And when we do that book announcement, we're telling the bookstores, you know, we're telling them about the book, but we're also giving them a digital PDF um, advanced reader copy of the book. We're also giving them instructions on how to order for distribution, which is through um, Ingram, which is a worldwide distributor. Um, so the messaging is a little different. When we message for the public for sales, you know, we do that on our website, we do that on social media, and um, you know, we do that through press releases that will go to the media that's an announcement of the book being published so that when that press release gets published in the newspapers, it's information for people reading it to know that they can go buy this book that's now been released. Um, so I guess that's the difference, just a difference in messaging and, and in, in lists. And when Sarah was talking about gathering her tribe, I think she was also talking about her email list, right? She was oh, yeah. asking all of her yes. contacts. And yeah. so that's something that we suggest each author does because mm -hmm. your, your best supporters are going to be the people who know you and the people who are mm -hmm. excited for you to publish this book. Mm -hmm. So you want to um, gather that list and make an email announcement and create an email newsletter out of that. Um, you can also put something on your website where people can sign up for your e email newsletter, like a sign up form um, right on your website too. So you can gather more people um, on your list. Uh, yeah, another I, good, I just another used, good place. I'm sorry. Go ahead, sir. No, I just was going to, I just use survey monkey for the newsletters. I mean, you know, a lot of these things are just almost free. Mm -hmm. Another good place to have a link is to have it in your email, right under your name, have a link to sign up for your newsletter. Yeah. In your email. Cause, yeah. Cause that's another good way of collecting. Um, do you ever use any place like book funnel to try to use something to promote the books at all? I haven't used book funnel. Um, we use a lot of different places like library thing. It's a, mm -hmm. a, a major database where lots of librarians throughout the country um, learn about books. They share recommendations. They get, um, you can get free books. And so as a publisher, we're on that site and we give away books before the books are published. Um, they're called, it's an early review giveaway. Mm -hmm. And so 
um, people sign up, you know, they request your book and then we, we mail it to them. And we usually do about um, 10 copies, sometimes more. And they go all over the country, which is really great. And then the reviews come in and they'll put the reviews on library thing and also sometimes on Goodreads and Amazon for the public, um, for those members who aren't on library thing. But when it's in library thing, it's nice because all lots of librarians, there are thousands, you know, thousands of users on it. So librarians will see those reviews and it will encourage them to buy the book for the library that they work for. Um, so that's a marketing tool that we use to, to reach librarians. Um, we do a lot of social media. We send out books to Instagram bloggers or sorry, bookstagrammers and then also people who have book blogs, book bloggers. Um, so people will review it there, put pictures of the books there. Um, I'm trying to think what else we utilize. Lots of email lists, as I said earlier. Um, Don't you think librarians are really important? I mean, yeah. it was, yeah, I mean, it was a librarian who ended up nominating my book for this Washington State Book Award. And um, I, I don't know how it got into their hands, but um, well, I'm librarian, grateful. Um, <laughs> librarians are key. And mm -hmm. what people don't know is when libraries start carrying your book, uh, the bookstores take notice. Hmm because people will go in the library, they'll find the book, and then they'll want to buy it for themselves. And that, and that there is residual effect. So getting into libraries is great. It's a little tough right now, but you want to be in libraries if you can get in the libraries. So um, Sarah, when you were doing your social media, what platform did you think worked best for you? Um, Instagram. Instagram. Yeah. yeah I, um, uh, I would post here and there on Twitter, but I'm, I'm a little bit more of a lurker on Twitter or, um, you know, it's, for some reason it, it overwhelms me. Um, and Facebook is okay too. I, I made sure to do original posts uh, across all three because personally I don't like it when it's really obvious when someone has them all connected and just, you know, like send, send, send it. it so um, if I'm going to post something on Facebook, it might be a different caption or a different picture than on Instagram, you know, out of respect for content production, I think. Um, just a, a personal thing. Uh, but I discovered Instagram stories came out around the time that my book was coming out. And um, that's what ends up working for me the best. I have a lot of fun with it. I, I, I feel silly. I feel like I'm 13 again. You know, I'm uh, at the time I had, you know, a 13 year old and they would completely make fun of me. But um, I was like, oh, my gosh, this is so fun. You can record yourself. You can take a picture. You can add a little, you know, graphic. Um, there's also all these fun apps where you can, you know, create your own um, promotion. And I don't know if I, if I was doing it right or, or wrong, but um it was really fun. I also had some really hot tips from a friend of mine who was like my biggest book supporter. In fact, she texted me before we got on and said she'll be on. I was like, Heather, no. But anyways, hi, Heather, if you're out there. Um, and she told me that it would be cool if I did like a, a piece of my book, you know, like a, a um, an excerpt and, and then assign like a picture to it. Since it's, a, it's my book was a memoir, is a memoir. That was really fun. I'm like, okay, well, this part of my book it, it, it captures an, a piece of an essence of my wedding. So let me find a picture of me in my wedding dress, you know. Um, yeah. And so I thought that was it. There's just all there's so many things you can do um, to be creative. And Samantha did a great job too. Um, Eddie, I just wanted to mention that we have a question. Um, I, I was just yeah. I was waiting for her to finish. I was about to get to that. Okay. Uh, so there is a question here. It says. I have zero time for promotion. What are the top three things I should do? Samantha, you want to take that one? Um, well, the number one thing is the website, because if you're not searchable online, you know, on Google or anywhere, then, you know, it, it's harder for people to find you. Um, and, you know, I guess a website doesn't take much time. If you don't have time, maybe you have resources, you can hire somebody to make one. Um, but, you know, like Sarah said, um, did you use WordPress? I can't remember. Um, Squarespace. Yeah, Squarespace. There, there are very easy um, web content management systems out there, Squarespace or WordPress. Um, I have a Squarespace too. And it, you know, it took me like one night. I kind of 
stayed up late and made my website. And um, so I would, I would say the website is number one. I'm not sure um, the next steps. What do you think, Sarah, for the top? I, I was thinking, um, okay, but I don't have much time. What was the question? <laughs> if it, time or they, they don't, they don't have, they don't have any, zero they have time. zero time. Okay. So zero time. So what would be the three best things to do? Um, I think if, if, uh, I was crunched on time, you know, being um, a parent of teens and working for a living as well. But I got really great advice from my, from the editor at Red Hen Press. And she knew that I was debut and I was a working parent. And she said, uh, just, just like infiltrate your city, you know, like get, go to all the readings you possibly can and meet the authors um, and introduce yourself. And uh, I'm, fortunate to be in Seattle, very literary city. Um, but I took that advice in, uh, you know, the three months before my book or maybe six months, um, just went to all the local readings and, um, got on my Facebook, you know, you have like the little Facebook groups, um, where what's everyone doing? What are these local authors up to? And so that's free and you should be interested in what other people are doing in your town. You know, you're making friends. These are your, these, these, this is your tribe outside of your friends and family. You want other readers besides people you know. So your goal should be meeting as many people as possible, which I mean, not everyone is prepared to do that. You know, you got different levels of introvert, extrovert. Um, I found it really exciting and motivating. So I thought that was really good advice, especially for like somebody new to the scene without. Um, yeah, yeah, definitely. Get Definitely getting into the community, the mm -hmm. artistic community of writing mm -hmm. and publishing mm -hmm. is a good thing to do. Mm -hmm. um, but if I had no time, the two things I would do is the website, like Samantha said, and just do an email once a month. Because hmm. what that what's that take? 10, 15 minutes? You know, um, and most people that don't have time are still on Facebook or yeah. some social media. Just take five minutes and post every once in a while. Yeah. You just do it consistently, but do it once in a while. Um, so I know we, we don't have a lot more time, but I do want to touch a little bit on advertising. Um, Samantha, d do you guys ever do any social media advertising like Goodreads or Amazon or anything along those lines? Yeah. And if so, ha have you had success with it? We've seen some success. We run some Facebook ads sometimes, um, which is nice because you can see the click-through rates and you can see how many people are clicking through to your book um, and then how many people are clicking through there to buy the book. So those are some nice um, measurements. We've done um, advertising through other organizations like mm -hmm. uh, the IBPA, the... Um, why am I blanking? Independent Book Publishers Association. They will, and also NEBA, the New England um, Booksellers Association, they will sell advertising spaces in their newsletters and their e-blasts, which go to thousands and thousands of booksellers, um, librarians, and people in, in the book industry. Um, also banners on their website, they sell. Um, we've done advertising in Poets and Writers. They have a, a really great deal for new authors and for indie authors. They have a a pretty cheap option for doing what's called a new titles listing, which is, a, a, it's like a business card size ad where you get a thumbnail of your book and you get about 50 words description about your book and your website. Um, now, of course, that's not as tangible because it's a print magazine, but it's always nice to, to have your, your book out there in the industry magazines. There's also the Kirkus reviews where we've seen fantastic <laughs> um, Kirkus reviews come in and then, um, that will get featured in their magazine, which is like the industry magazine that all booksellers are using. Mm -hmm. Which one is that? Kirkus Kirk 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 Review. Yeah. Kirkus Review. Mm -hmm. um, so, Sarah, you mentioned a little while ago that you were entered in a contest. Did you personally enter any contest? Um, again, part of their um, quest author questionnaire was a, was a page, and then eventually they sent me a spreadsheet of you know, places I'd like for them to send it and then the uh, awards that I'd like for them to send it. And so, um, yeah, I knew that the Washington State Book Awards was someplace I wanted to submit my my book. And so they submitted it, like 10 copies or something. Yeah, nice. Mm -hmm. um, 
I did not pay for any advertising, but I don't, but Red Hen didn't really either. Um, so, but they do have a very extensive email list and they, as you said, send out updates every month. Yes. E email is the key. Mm -hmm. uh, all the social media can be linked to your email. So that's nice. Mm -hmm. Um, but it does get into people's boxes, you know, they yeah. may or may not read it, but it does get into their boxes and it is about how many times they see your name, you know, between social media, print media and ebook and, and email. So all of that's important. Yeah. That's I think Instagram and Facebook would, well, I guess Twitter does graphics now too, but something about the eyeballs connecting your name to a face. Yes. That's, it's all yeah. about branding and, at that and point. And the book cover. The more times you <laughs> see that book cover, too. In different places. They, yeah. they, you want them to see it in different places. You don't necessarily want to see all in one place. I loved when my friends were reading it and posting it with a picture of the cover. I, yeah. It's like almost like a natural, you know, piece. That, that yeah, is, any of that authentic stuff that you can do, you know, like, it just looks real. It, like Samantha's, oh, this is Charlotte Pierce again. I'm sorry. I just... I just intruded in. We have about one more minute, but I've been, I followed uh, Sam's uh, postings of her, her poetry book and, you know, they're just, they're just delightful. You she know. did a great job. Yeah. Really good. She did. When you find um, it in the wild, when you find your book in the wild, that's a thing. Yeah. When you're, when you're at a bookstore and you're like, oh my gosh, it's here. This is, it, it really is just the most exciting. Yeah, absolutely. Thing. <laughs> So we have just a couple, uh, you know, about 30 seconds left, but uh, we have two hashtags. If you use them on social media, as we've been talking about, uh, th that will bring people back to this episode for one thing. And also you can win groovy stuff. We'll, we'll come up with something good. We, we scan, we lurk once in a while and we, we check them out. Ipni member and face the book TV are the two hashtags. Again, thank you, Eddie, as for a masterful job hosting again. You, you've you uh, earned a permanent spot in the, the host chair, I think. I think so. <laughs> yes, natural. Yes. Uh, Samantha, I really appreciate you stepping in. And, uh, you know, your work with Rootstock is very, not only your own book, but the other books that you represent on Rootstock. I, I watch that stuff, you know, and it's... It's really good, effective marketing. So sometimes it's good to hire somebody. <laughs> um, this is your book, Birth of a Daughter. I love it. Amazing. I sit there when I need a break from the tech, I, I go and get Birth of a Daughter and because I have a daughter too, but she's 21. <laughs> With a whole new set of challenges. <laughs> um, Eddie Vincent, he uh, runs in Circle Publications. It's, and he publishes what thirty books a year or something, Eddie? What do you? Do? Yeah, give or take. We we publish twenty four books, and then we slide a few in after that. So yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So he's one of our larger publishers in IPNE, but mm -hmm. he still finds time to do his magic with the organization, and it's growing and thriving. So we encourage people to join. It's, it's very simple URL: ipne.org. And. Uh, my my Pierce Press is the publisher. We I actually do two other podcasts: a rowing podcast and a peer and learning and peer production podcast. And that's about it. Anything else we should add? No, I think that's good for now. I think that as usual, we just scratch the surface. So, <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's yeah. it's a fun fun industry. Um, yeah, tough, I, we're definitely rewarding. But I, I, like I said at the beginning, I think people kind of they get so caught up in what they want to produce, the book they want to produce, that they forget that you're, if you're not marketing, you're going to be privishing instead of publishing. Which, and you can uh, it's you can start marketing once you start writing. You know, you can start as mm -hmm. early as that. You can put a little post. Hey, mm -hmm. I've I've written five thousand words today. You know, yeah. it gets people interested right from the get-go. You don't have to wait for an image. Yeah. And if you're on Twitter, there are all these uh, writer communities on Twitter you can join. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Hashtag writers community, hashtag writing. 
um, hashtag WIP, which is work in progress. I do that constantly. I just finished a novel. And so I was always doing my, my count run. I would say my WIP is now, you know, 20,000 words. I'm almost there. Or not almost, but you know, yeah. and then, yeah. and then all the writers see you and they give you support mm -hmm. and it's kind of a nice community. I think the old days of buy my book, you know, 50,000 times are really behind us, thankfully, because that is just, just does not work. You have to go out and beat the bushes, pay but it forward. That everybody's excited and supporting your book. It's mm -hmm. not just buy my book, but like, look at how great this is. I have this book. Yeah. Everybody's excited to celebrate but, that with you. Exactly, and, yeah. And they want to be connected to the author. They want to emotionally mm -hmm. be connected. Yeah. Yeah. Well, listen, thank you all for joining and we'll uh, do another one soon. I think we're going to do uh, one on a, uh, printing uh, on demand versus uh, short run printing. But the, the topics are endless, but I think that might be our next one. So take care, y'all. Thank, Thank, so Thank, 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 Thank you so much for coming. Thank you. Thank you, Sarah Sam. Thank you.